there, I hope you're doing well today. I have this sketchbook out so you might know what's coming. In this sketchbook I pick out slightly obscure movies and TV scenes. We're just painting them until the entire sketchbook is filled. I'll leave the playlist here and down below if you're interested. I wonder what we've got for today? Today we're going to be painting a scene from the Netflix TV show Queen Charlotte. It's kind of a spin-off to Bridgerton and there will be some spoilers in this video, just a forewarning. Queen Charlotte. I don't even know where to begin. It's an absolutely heartbreaking TV show, but it's so heartwarming as well. There's amazing storylines in it and I definitely recommend that you watch it. It's so different to Bridgerton, but it follows on from everything that made Bridgerton good, but then it has such a strong storyline to go with it. Queen Charlotte follows the young queen who we saw in Bridgerton and her husband, King George. We see them a little bit in Bridgerton, and one of the things that I really love about the Bridgerton show is just how much happens, even though it's just kind of a slow burner there's just so much that happens in every single episode it's one of my favorite shows i really love it and i love lots of different shows i mean i also loved up until the end <laughs> game of thrones and the walking dead there's so many other shows that i love but i really love this one too and this has made it right up there we don't see King George very often in the show, but obviously he is known as the Mad King still to this day. Whereas Charlotte, we see a lot in the show and she's portrayed so well. I wasn't super hyped for this spin-off because it wasn't really necessary. I know that is the thing right now, that everything has a ton of spin-off shows. And don't get me wrong, there have been some that I've absolutely loved, but this one... I was excited for it, but I didn't have high hopes, and honestly, it was incredible. Like, it was so good. The show mainly follows Charlotte and George's arranged marriage, and then them actually falling in love, but it also covers mental health. It covers mental health in such an incredible way. I love that it starts following Charlotte, her treatment, being forced into an arranged marriage, not knowing the guy, the guy not really wanting to get to know her, and she's just in a really bad situation, and I love how they started it like that, because then there's a twist and you get to see it from his perspective, and that is absolutely genius. I love when they do that in film and in TV shows, and it all clicks and it all starts to make sense. In the first episode, I believe, Charlotte tries to run away on her own wedding day and climb this wall to escape. And you see it from her perspective, George meets her, tries to convince her to not, but give her the choice ultimately. This scene that I chose to paint is the scene quite a few episodes later where we see George's perspective, where he goes to look for her and he finds her in this scenario. And you also get to see all of the points that led up to this and why he treated her the way that he did. The storytelling is amazing and I love that they did it in this way because you spend the beginning feeling sorry for Charlotte and wondering why he's treating her like that and then you feel sorry for George and the way that she's treating him but neither party knows what the other one's going through, it's so sad. When it comes to George, we don't actually know what his mental health condition is, it's suspected that it's bipolar but I don't think we'll ever truly know. 
The way they treated mental health in those days is absolutely barbaric and it's so sad to watch the treatment, the punishments, it's horrific. And I love that in the end, the thing that actually makes George better, the best treatment of all, is the kindness that Charlotte shows him. It's so absolutely gut-wrenching. I generally don't cry in movie and TV shows. Like, I just generally, up until a couple of years ago, I'd never cried watching anything. It's just kind of, I don't know, it's who I am. And I was so close to crying at many points during this show. Honestly, it's so incredibly emotional and sad, but also uplifting at the same time. It truly is something to watch if you've never seen it. I would love to hear your thoughts down below if you have watched it, whether you enjoyed it. I think it's hard to compare the show to Bridgerton because it's a completely different format. I love Bridgerton, I love that it's completely chill and there's a narration and it's just kind of funny a lot of the times, whereas Queen Charlotte is a lot more dramatic so much happens and there's so many important topics that they cover but i mean i'm fully here for a bridgerton cinematic universe if that's the route they want to take i fully support that i think all of the actors did an amazing job and i love that they included the lgbtq storyline in a lot of ways it was lovely to see that they deeply cared for each other but it was also so sad because they could never be together. It's a side storyline but I'm so glad that they included it. I would have liked some kind of ending to see how it ended. Obviously they couldn't be together because of the time but I do feel like it ended a little bit on a cliffhanger. Lady Danbury's storyline was also kind of crazy. I mean, they alluded to her life a little bit in Bridgerton, but it was all just a big question mark, really, and I did not expect what we got. It was so incredibly sad to watch. It's so sad that she didn't really get a happy ending, and her entire life was just so sad the entire bit, but she's such a strong character, and I love that we got to see a different side to her. But it wasn't what I was expecting. I was not expecting that from her storyline and her life at all. I'm not really sure why they included the Bridgerton gal, if I'm honest. I know that it's for continuity and she's obviously in the Bridgerton series, but I don't feel like her story really added anything. She just kind of existed. And they tried to create a little bit of drama with whether Lady Danbury was seeing her dad and all of that kind of thing and whether she was going to find out in real time. And I just don't think any of that was really necessary Necessary. There were a lot of extra plots that I don't think were really needed. The whole Queen Charlotte thing as well with her children in real time not actually getting married and having kids. I don't know if that was needed to an extent but I guess they had to add the humour in somewhere. It kind of explained a little bit of why she was so vacant in her children's life as well and why she was so standoffish because she prioritised George throughout everything but I'm just not sure a lot of the real time stories were exactly needed especially when the flashback storyline was so strong I just don't think all of the extra scenes were needed but yeah those are kind of my thoughts on Queen Charlotte I think if you haven't seen it already you definitely should it's very different to Bridgerton so regardless of whether or not you like Bridgerton it's such a different show that you definitely should watch because the message is so important if you haven't already seen it I feel like I should talk about the painting a little bit now. I kind of knew I wanted to do this scene ever since I saw it in the first episode, but that one kind of has Charlotte's face in it and I wanted to do a bit more of like an actual scene rather than a person. So then when we saw George's perspective, I knew this was the scene I wanted to do. The scene looks lovely. It's a very light scene. There's a lot of flowers. There's a lot of different colours. It's a very pretty scene. And I saw the scene as a viewer and I thought it was pretty. But I didn't quite look at the scene as an artist and figure out how on earth I was going to paint it. Now this is only the third scene that I've ever painted and I tend not to do detailed pieces like this so it's definitely something new for me. I'm also using an Etcher sketchbook which is probably one of the best sketchbooks you can get but it's still nowhere near as good as Archer's paper so that was just an extra thing that I was kind of dealing with. I do feel like the hot pressed Etcher can't really take as many layers as the cold pressed. 
I might be talking rubbish, they could have just changed the paper since I bought my cold press one, I don't know, but I just don't remember it being this difficult to work with. For the first layer, I mostly just kind of toned the paper wet on wet, I did some yellow areas for the wall and some green for the plants and then just kind of left it at that. Then I had to figure out how on earth I was going to try and create this piece and one thing that I didn't quite realise was how many plants there are. I don't really do plants and I can kind of allude to plants a little bit by doing tiny little dots as you'll see that I did for this piece, I just did lots and lots of dots and hope it would kind of look like a plant eventually. There were a lot of plants, there were a lot of flowers, a lot of leaves, a lot of branches and I feel like I didn't quite take that in when I first looked at this photo. Plus there were bricks and people and I feel like I didn't quite take all that in when I first saw this. It looks like a really subtle scene but there's a lot going on in the background. One thing that I've been doing especially for this series is I have been staying with a very light painting for such a long while because I'm kind of scared of going too dark too early and not being able to go back on myself. I know technically you can mix in some white gouache and try to create some highlights again but that's not a route that I'm confident with, it's not something I've done at all really so I'm trying to avoid that but it does mean that I get about three or four layers in and I'm stuck with a really light piece like the values are far too light and it's really lacking contrast so then I have to suddenly add really dark shades. Although surprisingly the most difficult part of this painting was actually painting George. He's kind of at a weird angle, you're looking at him from behind where you can see hair and a tiny bit of his head and he's completely blurry obviously on in the actual show and it was actually really difficult to try and paint him because in the show it's just kind of a big blur and I really didn't know how to approach that one. George actually kind of ruins this piece, like what I've managed to do with his face and his hair, I think he is what ruins this piece. I added some splatters as well because I thought that'd be fun and that would make the piece a little bit more watercolour, a little bit more flowy. And I tried to save George about seven times, I just kept going over and over it and I could not save him so I had to call it a day because I was running out of daylight. I refined Charlotte's hair a little bit more, I'm really happy with her hair and her dress and I do like the flowers in the background and that the plant in the corner is a little bit blurry. I'm just going to peel off the tape now and show you the final result. I really hope you like this one, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and I would love to know your thoughts on the show down below. Let me know if there's any movies or TV scenes you'd like to see me paint in the future. And I would love if you could subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. We are now on 2k, it's amazing, thank you so much and I will see you on Sunday for a new video. Bye bye!